Thank you all for being here. This is, as Judy said, our inaugural uh, uh, Eco Festival, and I'll talk about that in a second. But before I do, let me just acknowledge all of the folks that have worked with us for, gosh, 30 years. And I hate to say this, especially because I started when I was five. <laughs> uh, uh, in any case, the, the, the real thing that we wanted to showcase here is, in addition to me and the staff and what we've done, is the reimagining of the space as a community collaboration innovation studio, so to speak. And you'll notice that there are huddle rooms everywhere that have a specific kind of theme that, that carry over from our slogan. We've got a podcast room back there. We've got our conference room, and we've got my man cave back there. Uh, but in any, So I just wanted to welcome you all, tell you how thrilled we are that you are here. It's been 30 years since our founding at, by the way, the Los Angeles Economic Development Corporation, in case many of you don't know this. We were a committee under the LAEDC when we started LADA 30 years ago and then took it out as an independent organization a few years after. Uh, since then, our journey has been an adventure. It's first as the state of California's partner, and you may not know this, we were a partner of the state of California in the 90s when the defense downsizing started in Los Angeles in right earnest, and we lost 800,000 jobs in the state, 400,000 of them in Southern California. But this is not a job creation activity or enterprise. It was meant to stimulate the growth of entrepreneurs who would be able to avail of very, very slim state funding to be able to match to uh, federal awards in science and tech. And the result, if I can say so, all of these 30 years later, is a robust new set of industries, including th ones that we will pursue, uh, we'll talk about in the next couple of days. So um, one of the things that I want to be able to acknowledge, uh, because we have guests here from the federal agencies, is the role the federal agencies have played in all of this. Uh, LADA has been a partner to the federal agencies on the commercialization of technologies. And uh, that started with NIH. And you'll hear from one of our guests from NIH from all of those years ago coming to join us here for a small little chat. Uh, it was followed by NSF and USDA. And if you don't know what these mean, you should. And I'm not going to go and tell you what they mean. You can look it up. US, uh, NIH, USDA, NSF, NIST, DOE, and then NOAA. And so from NIH and NOAA, we have representatives from those two agencies coming here to talk to us about what we've meant to them and what the whole notion of being able to work through the commercialization of technologies funded by the SBIR program, high risk, high impact, the largest such program in the world. Um, also in the 90s, uh, that some of you may remember, we actually started the Venture Forum. Uh, and it was called the Southern California Technology Venture Forum, which went on for 16 years and stopped the day Michael Jackson died. It's purely coincidental, I'll tell you. Um, uh, but it was, we, we ended up being uh, very active in the Bay Area and in Los Angeles. Um, and that was about the innovations that we were working with at the time that were both with the federal agencies and locally here in the Los Angeles area, presenting them to investors and partners and so on. Um, ECO, this festival, it encompasses really the areas we've covered in our work over those past 30 years, right, under the broad umbrella of a sustainability agenda, uh, which I'll explore in more detail following this welcoming session. Uh, let me quickly guide you through the itinerary. Today is the open house, obviously, and you're all enjoying yourselves thoroughly and getting to meet people you never thought you'd ever meet and never thought you needed to meet. Uh, and that's the whole point of, a, of, of building a network. Tomorrow and the next day are very specifically focused on our demo days for different things. Tomorrow is morning is HEAL, which is our local initiative for healthcare innovations for underserved communities in Southern California, because one of the problems that we have here is that there's all of this great richness of research and very little that actually gets deployed in Los Angeles, unlike, say, areas like Boston, Chicago, even areas like North Carolina, and dare I say it, and I will, Florida. Um, uh, so that, that's our community labs stuff tomorrow. 
starting with heal.la in the morning and then moving to the Venture Fellows, which is a program we have also developed in the last year uh, to focus on entrepreneurs from undervalued communities, as I call them. I don't like to use the word underserved if I can help it. Undervalued communities who are dealing with the effects of climate change in their communities. And you see many of the folks from both the Heal and Venture Fellows here in attendance today. Uh, when, you, when you do meet them, uh, I would ask the fellows from the Venture Fellows and the uh, participants in the Heal.LA to identify yourselves proudly as being, I'm with Heal.LA or I'm with the Venture Fellows, because that'll make me feel very happy. And you do not want to make me feel unhappy, by the way, I'll tell you right now. On Wednesday is our NOAA demo day. And this is the one federal program that we have where we're actually required to do a demo day. And this is for oceans. So everything to do with waterways, oceans, the cleanup of pollution, the resilience of coastal communities, the removal of CDR, carbon dioxide, from oceans, uh, the, I, the uh, detection of methane, all of those things that are part of this whole notion of sustainability, which we'll talk about in a minute, uh, is part of what we are doing on Wednesday. And so that's the, those are the days. It is a festival, and I'm very glad, grateful to have you all here. Let me now turn to some friends of ours who've been with us for a long, long time. Um, and they look just as amazing as I do. Uh, Bob Ashley, our chairman of 30 years. Right? He's been with us throughout this process. Uh, I couldn't find a more supportive, better guide and mentor for me in my craziness than Bob. And then we'll follow with Bob with John Goodman, another leading light here in the innovation arena, and she's now extremely involved in education, uh, who's, who's a, a major engine provocateur, right, for us in bringing us out of hibernation in LAEDC and pulling us into the light of an independent organization at a group called EC2 which was, I, many of you here may know, EC2 was the Annenberg-funded incubator that was a leading light in the pioneering era of digital media. And John ran EC2 and ran a whole program at USC, and that's where we were for many years, again, because of John. And then following John, Matt Walton, the founder of E-Team, which was one of our first grants that we made as a state agent and a state mandated organization and grew to become a leading light for the response to 9-11 as an emergency response system. There's a lot more to it than that. It is, it's gone beyond, well beyond that and Matt has become quite a luminary. These three people have graciously agreed to bolster my argument about why we're so important and so great. Uh, but I know that they love us. And so let me turn it over to Bob first. Okay. You know, Rohit is a master of communication, so much so that he, he uh, under any circumstances, doesn't want to miss any detail. He asked me to talk about the beginning of LARTA, but you just heard it from him. <laughs> but I, I will go over it in a slightly different way anyway. Uh, the, uh, the start of LARTA, as uh, Lord mentioned, was around 30 years ago, after the end of the Cold War, between uh, the, the Soviet Union and the United States. And uh, the federal government wanted to preserve technology in the defense arena uh, that resided in a, the community of small businesses uh, who were in jeopardy of falling by the wayside. So they uh, had the idea of funding those companies with uh, technology that was important to the defense. And uh, uh, through a, a grant system and uh, to preserve those companies from either failing or going into totally different directions, they wanted uh, them to convert to commercial applications for that technology. And the grants that they offered 
and you'll hear a little more about this from Matt Wong, uh, the grants that they offered had to have matching funds, as Robert mentioned. And the California, among other states, started a program to match those federal grants uh, through what were called regional technology alliances. And uh, the, uh, the one in Los Angeles uh, was awarded to the LAEDC, and uh, Road was asked to uh, launch it and, and become the CEO. And shortly after, uh, I was asked to chair the board. And the uh, name of the company was the Los Angeles Regional Technology Alliance, and now LARTA. Uh, the, uh, uh, I, I covered all of that I think I'm going to on the uh, beginning, but one of the uh, challenges, one of the challenges for LARTA in, in starting uh, the uh, program was uh, we only had one client, the California uh, CalTIP, as it was called. And uh, we started to uh, look for other avenues of uh, revenue and, uh, and did uh, activate a number of programs, all of which were still related to uh, small technology companies. And uh, some years after that, the government of, of California <laughs> zeroed out the funding for Caltip. Uh, in a, in a down year economically. And having done that, LARTA was the only one of the RTAs that survived uh, because of Rohit's efforts in the diversification uh, programs. So uh, as it turned out, uh, we were still there, but barely, and it was a a challenge to uh, to move on, but we were able to do it. Uh, working with Road and the larger team over the past thirty years has been an, an honor and a privilege. Um, at this point, I'm sure not just a few of you are uh, asking yourselves, "Why am I still doing this?" and uh, I ask myself that same question <laughs> on occasion. Uh, but I, I've heard a rumor that the, all of the other uh, directors of the board have formed a pool to see how long I'll, I'll last. So, <laughs> uh, that's what's challenging me. But it's been a marvelous experience to have witnessed so many successful companies come out of uh, Larder's programs, and uh, not the least of which was uh, Matt Walton and E-Team, who you'll be hearing from shortly. Uh, but it's also been you know, a great pleasure to work with so many dedicated team members on the staff, Robert, of course, and uh, uh, many bright, dedicated, and interesting people. <clears throat> uh, the board right now and the staff right now are uh, as good or better than we've ever had. So we are really very, very enthusiastic about the, the entire team. Uh, and then, of course, we had many people over the years 
that worked with us and uh, contributed. And none of those, in terms of the board of directors, uh, was more outstanding than John Goodman, who uh, gave so much to uh, Larda and uh, was always fun to work with. Yeah. Uh, but I must say, the biggest personal reward that I've had over the 30 years was to work with Rohit, the heart and soul of Larda. He was consistently displaying the finest skills of leadership, management, and vision, and all of that coupled with a very solid character. Uh, I've enjoyed every minute of that relationship. Uh, but one can only be a great leader if they have great people to lead. And in that respect, uh, the, the staff and the members of the team of LARDA uh, meet those requirements going away. Uh, I wish you all an enjoyable uh, rest of the morning and day. And you'll be hearing a lot more uh, from uh, Rowan and the team. And uh, I hope you enjoy it and find some of it interesting. Thanks. Thank you all. Thank you all for now I know what your feedback problem is. Um, thank you all for being here. And of course, this is one of those times where you look around and you go, holy cow, I'm still above the dirt and 30 years. Okay, a couple of things. I've known these guys for so long, Google wasn't invented. <laughs> so you need to know the most important fact for me about Bob. He told me what bosun meant. Google it. <laughs> Where'd you go? Okay. There's a guy who was a bosun. Okay. Right? So, when we first started this extraordinary journey, I was fairly new to Los Angeles. Um, I met Rohit when it was part of LAEDC because I came to LA in 89 because I had a background in economic development and entrepreneurship. And so I came to be head of the entrepreneur program at USC. And I got to LA and discovered that economic development was real estate. I mean, period, that was it. And so I went looking around to see if there were any other federal contractors as I had been in Texas. And I discovered LAEDC and Rohit and this program, the Regional Technology Alliance, and then you all know Rohit. So he's looking at me and going, what happened to my prepared remarks <laughs> where everything else went, Rohit? The whole idea about economic development is about innovation and entrepreneurship. And that's not just about private companies. It's not just about technology transfer. It's not just about invention. It's also about understanding opportunities. The amazing thing about LARDA, and I can't tell you, ladies and gentlemen, how amazing this is, is that it's still here and still successful. This is really entrepreneurial. In the nonprofit world, you can't say that about many nonprofits. So in the early 90s, I discovered Rohit, and he made me laugh. And my father had a very famous line in our family. It's got to be either funny or forgotten. <laughs> and as a consequence, I don't remember much else other than he was funny. And then Walter Annenberg gave USC $120 million. And for some bizarre reason, they asked me if I would write the business plan for it. So I did, and wrote the business plan for the first internet incubator in the world. 
and started it. And it was really great fun until we discovered that LA had no fiber. <laughs> and that really, that was a problem if you were an internet research facility because the incubator was just a tiny part of what we did. What we did was research. And I turned to Rohit. And Rohit may not remember, but the reason there is fiber down Figueroa is because Rohit got it done, which enabled us to have something called ec2.edu. And you go on the Wayback Machine, and it's even still there, because Rohit knew how to entrepreneurially move the bureaucracies. It was an extraordinary thing. So cut to many years later when LARDA morphed into other things. And so in the hope that I will keep this even shorter than I had planned, I want you to know how remarkable it is that you innovators and entrepreneurs are teamed with an innovator and an entrepreneur. That is really rare. To do that in the nonprofit world is possible. It's just very unusual. Having been there, I can tell you that I do it in another world now. I'm working to make sure that this region has a literate, smart, enabled workforce. So we work with inner city middle schools and high schools to make sure that we get graduates who are what's called the A through G curriculum, which is what is required by all the University of California schools in high school graduates. And we do inner city because we're training the workforce of tomorrow. And that workforce of tomorrow are going to be your employees. And they take calculus and they build robots and they know how to read and write and they know how to calculate because that's what we need. One of the things that I hope you will all do, whether or not you're affili affiliated with LARDA affiliated companies or whether or not you're just interested in the kind of stuff they do, keep innovating, keep inventing and support as many entrepreneurial nonprofits as you possibly can. And for those of you whose familiar faces I haven't seen since before the lockdown. Hi, Farida, how are you? <laughs> I think it is absolutely wonderful that LARDA is here because one of the things that you've got to remember is that most of the organizations, civic organizations around the United States who get so heavily invested in supporting innovation and entrepreneurship don't survive. We're not so big on keeping balloons aloft. We are much bigger on puncturing them. So my congratulations to you. You've done a remarkable job. And to my next handoff, Matt Walton embodies everything that LARDA has done from the beginning. So here's Matt. Thank you. <clears throat> These are three very tough acts to follow. Uh, and to put my role here in context, I, what I really am is one of Rohit's first lab rats, okay? <laughs> um, back in the early 90s, which qualifies me as a dinosaur, um, we were a little tiny company that had resulted from the merger of an entertainment company and a DARPA-funded R&D company. And we had these ideas in the early 90s that this new thing called the internet, it's funny, I was talking to some of the LARDA staff here, and I know that what I was talking about was before they were born, um, is uh, and there was a new thing called the internet, and we thought it was gonna have a real impact on entertainment. And it might even have other uses like, because I'd been knocked out of my home by the Northridge earthquake for a year in 94, maybe it could be used for that too. Uh, and, but it was pre-bubble, and we were trying to raise money. And nobody really knew what we were, and they really couldn't, they didn't get it. And I had the great fortune of meeting Rohit, and he got it. 
because he just gets it. And he called me up one day and he said, man, I got a problem. I said, what, what can I do to help? He said, well, I've got this thing called Caltip and they gave me this bucket of money. But if I don't get it, this was in May, if I don't get it allocated by the end of June, I'm gonna lose it. I said, well, that's a problem I can help you with. Um, what do we gotta do? He said, well, it's simple. He said, I can give you up to a half a million dollars. I said, great, what's the catch? He said, well, the catch is you gotta have a half million dollar match. And I said, really? And how much time do I have to do it? He said, well, you got three weeks because you know, otherwise it's gonna start to disappear. I went, okay, okay. Well, long story short, we were doing some work, interesting work with the Defense Department at that point. We were looking at some interesting technology that they were interested in. Uh, there were budgets that were not necessarily constrained. I was able to make a phone call, I made a phone call, and made a phone call, and we got a federal procurement in three weeks. And I was able to then go to Rohit and say, here it is, here's half a million dollars. And he said, good, here's a half a million dollars. And so that launched this company that we, at that point, were both focused on this new thing called virtual reality that everybody was talking about, nobody had ever seen, except if you were in the defense world, you'd seen it all the time. Because it was used for all kinds of simulation purposes, we're deeply involved in that. And we're also involved in using the internet for distributed command and control systems and uh, we ultimately, out of that, spawned two companies. One that did the biggest virtual reality attraction that was ever built in the beginning in the Sarah Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. My partners took that, and I started this thing called E-Team, which they, they mentioned. And I'll just end by saying that that money, without that money, uh, I don't know where I'd be, but I don't think I'd be standing in front of you. Um, it spawned a whole bunch of things. Uh, and um, it wasn't just the money. That's what I want to say. It wasn't just the money. It was the vote of confidence that our being affiliated with LARDA gave us because in order to get the emergency management side of what we were doing out, we needed to have a partner where we could demonstrate that technology, and we decided, why not do L.A.? You know, I mean, everything bad in the world happens here. So... <laughs> So if, if, if we could do it here, you could probably do it anywhere, right? Um, but we needed credibility. And, uh, and Rohit and Larda helped us enormously with that. We also needed visibility. And I'll just end by saying that one day he called me up and I, the word I always think of when I think of you, Rohit, is peripatetic. And it's because it's a big word that nobody really would understand except Rohit. But, <laughs> but he called me up in this, this peripatetic way. He said, Matt, he said, do you want to talk to the Wall Street Journal? And I said, uh, sure. <laughs> Why? And he said, well, they're doing this piece on this, you know, defense conversion thing, blah, blah, blah. So I got on the phone with the reporter. And he said, so what do you do exactly? I said, well, we've got this company. It's coming out of the defense industry. And we're kind of taking it into both entertainment and emergency management. And, and then just without even thinking about it, I said, it's a little bit like we're the defense entertainment complex. And they love that. So that was the headline. Uh, and that term started to be used for a while. And that's really what we were. We, we were part of that conversion where, and just to end this by saying, and in 96, uh, which was still early stages in what has unfolded as a long journey. But in 96, the Clinton administration set up a program called Plowshares. And the whole focus of Plowshares was to transition military research and development into the civilian sector for uh, peaceful civilian purposes. And E-Team was the first program selected out of Plowshares. So with that, I'm a pleasure to be here. Thank you. <clears throat> I have to tell you, despite my great belief in myself, uh, those were things I don't think I would hear often enough. Um, I mean, remarkable folks, remarkable folks, all three of them, but they represent, I think, what we've come to recognize and understand, that it does take people, and this is about people. This is not just about intellect. It is not, I know I, I appreciate the, the words about my extraordinary intelligence, um, 
uh, and, and intellect, but it is much more than that. It's about spirit, it's about communication, it's about corralling, it's about communing, it's about so many things that build an ecosystem. And so that's what I want to be able to talk to you about. If you'd like to be able to stretch a little bit and then sit back down if you're sitting or in place if you're standing, that'll probably be a good thing because now I'm about to take you on a journey that will actually talk about the next 30 years.